This film deals with how uh, the city of Cape Town and first respondent conspired to defeat the ends of justice and both have committed the act of perjury under oath. This movie only deals with one aspect um, and this is the basement garden courtyard area uh, which was subject to my high court matter and I've made this movie just so you can see how the city um, obstruct uh, the Access to Information Act uh, and do not allow the full record to be put into uh, any disclosure process. It's actually really very shocking um, and I'm hoping that what I went through doesn't happen to anybody else. Um, so with that in mind I'm making this movie and I hope this helps anybody who's in a very similar situation to mine um, whose property may be collapsing due to uh, the removal of lateral support and your neighbour building illegally without an approved plan. The applicant's papers have been handled by the respondent. I won't take your lordship to the law. The quotation, the point we make is, the Justice Home says, but there are disputes of fact. Motion proceedings are not an appropriate means of resolving them. They are designed to deal with matters based on common cause facts. So, save for special circumstances, the issues of fact should not be determined on motion proceedings. Doesn't the question arise why an action wasn't commenced from the outset? Well, my Lord, that may be so, but your Lordship will appreciate the, the applicant's position that she thought she was coming to court simply to enforce an agreement in some type of conditions. Uh, she did not anticipate that these all manner of defences would be raised, in, including, we say, coercion, amendments, acquiescence, um, but that, she says, was not something that she anticipated would come up. She thought she was simply coming to court to enforce an agreement and enforce type of conditions. Lord, um, this morning's application that we faced with is consistent with a pattern in this matter. The Lordship will have observed that the, one of the defences raised to specific performance is that the applicant waited for approximately um, over a year before launching the application. The application in relation to the review was launched some 14 months after the 2012 plans were approved. With regard to the building works, the Lordship in July 2012, the applicant was notified by Mr. Hoffmeyer that approval had been granted, building plan approval had been granted, and that the first respondent was going to commence works in relation to that approval, and the applicant was specifically invited if it wished to enforce its rights to the agreement to institute proceedings. This is the City of Cape Town official approval stamp, uh, which was approved on the 12th of July 2012. I put the 2012 uh, approval stamp to the left, and to the right is the Engineer Foundation layout drawings. Um, there are revision numbers 0 to 5. If you look at number 4, 30th of the 7th 2012, a garage was added and revision 5, 22nd of the 8th, 2012, a new garage and pool were added. Um, both these revision drawings were not being built to an approved 2012 plan. Okay, this is uh, the agreement drawing. Um, I've split the screen into two. At the top, it's the basement garden, uh, drawing 101, and at the bottom is the west elevation, um, drawing 102. 
If you look to the top drawing, you'll see um, there's a long line that runs to left to right a picture. That is my common boundary wall with um, Earth 58. And the line to the left of the picture going down in the top drawing is the boundary of 54, the other abutting neighbour. Um, you'll see that the existing basement garden is drawn as a non-coloured structure um, and there is no excavation on either of the retaining wall um, common boundary um, to the top or the left side of the drawing. And the west elevation, um, you can see um, that scale is 1 to 100. Here is a 2009 approval and look to the west elevation drawing at the bottom and you'll see that the what is called the basement garden, the courtyard area is exactly the same um, as the one in the previous agreement drawing but then go to the top plan and you'll see there's now a reinforced green concrete wall um, which says um, a retaining wall to engineers detail and the boundary walls to the left and the top are, remain the same. There is no evidence or description that any excavation will be done affecting the two abutting urban mine and um, Earth 54. This is how the building stood um, on the 12th of April 2011 when the building inspector issued a cease works order. He was alerted to the illegal building by the affected parties um, he hadn't been to visit the site despite two walls collapsing um, in the excavation. I have to question why he also failed to notice the lack of lateral support and that Mr Bradbury had excavated at least five metres and at this point had built up to three metres into the other abutting Earth 54. I did not know until I'd launched my application that the cease works order had only been given on the roof of the building um, as that is not what we were led to believe by the building inspector who assured us that the the, the whole building had a, a cease works order on it. So we're only going to deal with a basement garden um, that required a height departure in this movie. This is the approved 2009 west elevation and plan that Mr Bradbury should have been building to. Now let's have a look at the as-built reality. This is the view of the building before it was uh, this issued with a cease works order and we're looking from my property through the wall that was recklessly demolished, a common boundary. And this is the view from inside the site and my surveyor has drawn some red arrows that are pointing to um, unlawful uh, openings that Mr Bradbury was trying to make the basement into a whole open yard and then further um, past the third red arrow you'll see there's a large hole which is an excavation without any lateral support going right underneath the earth 54 boundary as had the whole dwelling uh, without the knowledge of the earth 54 owner or without any retaining wall approved drawings and I've split the screen into two again and to the left is that wall on the approved drawing which you can see it's a straight line down suggesting no excavation and there's certainly no um, retaining wall or anything that indicates the photograph to the right is going to happen um, which is unlawful. And I've circled that section of wall in blue um, taken from the ground floor looking down um, into the basement and you'll see that it's now been built in brick um, without an approved drawing um, and long before the 2012 approval. After the cease works order was issued Mr Bradbury assured my attorney in writing that he was building to the approved plan. Again at this time we thought the approved plan was the agreement drawing. Once more I've split the screen in two and you can see the approved plan at the top and now the rooms have been bricked up uh, in the basement area, which is the picture at the bottom. So I've zoomed in uh, at the top picture and you'll see the green reinforced concrete wall going from left to right. Look at the bottom picture and Mr Bradbury has now built this in brick. You may think that's not a big deal, but remember this is a five meter excavation and this is a basement and that whole area that you can see is supposed to be filled with soil. Um, you cannot retain 
soil with a brick wall. And this once more proves the intention that Mr Bradbury had no intention um, of building to the 2009 approved drawing. And he certainly had no intention of filling that basement garden in with soil as per the approved plan. And the National Building Regulations E2 Safeguarding of Basements where any building is demolished to the level of the ground and such building contained a basement, the owner of such building shall provide or cause to be provided safe lateral support to the sides of, of such basement. Um, the National Building Regulations and Building Standards Act A5 Application Forms and Materials Scales and Sizes of Plans 1. Any application form shall be dated and signed in black ink by the owner 2. Any application shall be accompanied by at least one set of plans, drawings and diagrams which shall a. be clear and legible b. be drawn on any suitable material or be provided in a medium acceptable to the local authority c. contain the name and owner of the site concerned and d. be dated and signed in black ink by the owner and every subsequent alteration shall be likewise dated and signed. And what you're about to hear is the last meeting we had before the 2012 approval um, and we were being shown the 2012 elevation and plan drawings for comment. I've split the screen in two again. At the top uh, is the 2009 approved drawing where the west elevation was drawn from a scale 1 to 100 and the bottom picture is the 2012 drawings that were being um, advertised to us, um, which was the west elevation and typical garage section scale 1 to 50. Now at that time I couldn't read drawings, I was a layman. It was impossible. The 1 to 100 scale had four pictures on a page. Um, they were now titled differently. I mean there's now a typical garage section. I didn't understand any of this, but the fact that 1 to 50 was just so difficult to see as now we had drawings, either one whole drawing on one page or we had two drawings on a page and none of it made sense. It just didn't match up to the previous approved drawing. It, it was really confusing. I believe the architect did this with intention to deceive. That's the underneath. So what about this kink? The kink in the building that was there on the plans that we approved. There was a kink here. Okay, let's go through the levels because those basements... Because oh, the basement, it was on the basement as well. Yeah, this so is... So the, the, this is that's the this side plan. Side plan. Oh, okay, yeah. sorry, Ozzy, I don't understand. Okay. This is the side plan. Should we get to the basement there? <laughs> okay, so the green shows the... That's the best. Yeah, the, the, what's the writer plan application as opposed to what's not shaded in as what's been approved? Can I just I clarify that? So, when you so, but you've basically already built this, haven't you? This is already built. The kink has gone, it's not there. You've built this without approval. I'm just asking the question. This, this, so this green. Is, why, why are we repeating this? Because this was spoken about many months ago. No, no, I, I'm we only, cla I'm trying to clarify, Ozzy, no. because. There are certain things that have been this, no, 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 said. No, no, no. I don't want to go repeat things that have been agreed upon in the past. We've agreed that that kink was underground. Did we never? We never agreed. Okay. Sorry, we have spoken about this. This is underground. We've we've agreed that that will not harm anybody. That's been minted and minted and discussed in the past. That line uh, that exists I, like that. Can that you tell me where? Like, uh, okay, because I've got a transcript of everything. This was underground. I know, but it's, it's, I don't want to repeat things and carry on. This doesn't affect anybody it's below the ground. This is the drawing we were given um, of the basement garden in this um, May 2012 advertising process. And now let's go to the 2012 approval. Again, the plan is at the top. Um, and if you look to the left, you'll see the wall to the abutting of 54. has now changed to a reinforced concrete wall, which wasn't on the 2009 approved drawing which suggests it's either existing or has already been approved um, of which in this case neither 
and refer to the bottom west elevation picture of the 2012 drawing, you'll see the two reinforced concrete walls um, in the basement uh, area, which suggests that it's going to be exactly the same as the 2009 approved drawings. There's nothing to suggest that there's a five metre excavation either going into my property at the top of 57 or the property to the left um, of 54. However, if you look at the bottom west elevation, you'll see that the doors have actually now moved down towards the left and they're slightly larger, uh, which would affect the height departure. But none of these amendments have got any signatures or um, from the client or the city and they're not coloured so um, they're not already approved um, and they weren't built at that time so this elevation is really nonsensical. And here are the west elevations. The top one is the approved 2009 and the bottom one is the approved 2012. The west elevation affects my property and you will see there is nothing typed anywhere on both these drawings suggesting a retaining wall to engineer detail. And here you'll see two south elevations. These are the elevations that affect the Earth 54 and to the very left um, is the common boundary of both my property and that of Earth 54. The above drawing is the approved 2009 and the bottom drawing is the approved 2012 drawing. Uh, you'll see there's no signatures from either Mr. Bradbury or the city suggesting that there have been any amendments from the 2009 drawing to the 2012. And this is the 2009 South Elevation drawing um, basement level and look very closely and you'll see there's nothing that is written about any retaining wall. And note here the south elevation was a scale 1 to 100, which meant that these drawings were very tiny and there were four on each page. So it was very difficult to see any detail on these drawings, particularly if you're a layman. And here's the 2012 approved drawing. Um, there's no colour on the drawing and you'll see there are no um, suggestions of amendments, no nothing signed by either the owner, Mr Bradbury, or the city. And the scale has now changed to 1 to 50, which means the drawings were um, only two on a page as opposed to four. And you need a microscope to read back boundary retaining wall to engineer's specification. These were not minor building works. These were major building works. Five metre excavations, no permits, no permissions, no plan approval building into both abutting neighbouring properties. The removal of lateral support is clear in the videos. It is just mind-boggling that um, the building inspector, Steve Wilkinson, didn't pick any of this up on his inspections. None of these excavations had engineer drawings, approved drawings, the neighbours were not approached, and the 2009 plans did not refer to retaining walls. And this is how the garage and the basement area looked in September 2012. A gas chimney was already installed. You can see the brick retaining wall at the back there. The building that was under construction um, was nothing like uh, the 2012 drawings that we had seen. Um, it was a building site. There were lots of screens everywhere, so it was very difficult to see what was going on. But I took some photographs and my attorney sent them to Aussie Gonzalez. And on the 11th of February 2013, he wrote, Dear Mr. Gonsalves, I'm addressing you on behalf of my client, Ms. C. Phillips. Please find attached two photographs. Photograph one represents the courtyard at the above property, and photograph two represents the garage roof at the above property. If the above is indeed the case, then my client will proceed to the Western Cape High Court to interdict any further construction on the basis that she was duped into believing that certain agreed building plans would be followed, which are now not being followed at all, and once again retrospective planning is being allowed for unlawful construction. I wait to hear from you urgently. And then the following day, 
Aussie Consolvis replied to Barry Barkle and copied it myself and the other affected abutting property uh, of 54, stating, Dear Mr Barkle, work is continuing as per the approved plan and there has been no retrospective planning application made by Mr Bradbury. Then later that day, Aussie Gonzalez wrote the most extraordinary email to uh, my attorney, Barry Barkle. Um, on the 12th of February 2013, he wrote, Dear Mr Barkle, Mr Steve Wilkinson and I visited the property recently and couldn't find fault with what had been constructed at that point in time. Retaining walls gabions having been placed around the courtyard in order to retain the soil. The building work is still in progress. The gap will still need to be filled up, amongst other things, for the building to be deemed to be compliant with the approved plan. Steve Wilkinson has been monitoring the site very closely and will take the necessary action if needed. Marga Hayward too was being obstructed by the city and requested an urgent intervention from DA Gareth Blur and I launched a prior application to get the 2012 and 2013 drawings so I could put the 2012 plans aside. We then had a meeting with City Legal Services, Gonsalves and Juliet Leslie in order to hand over the drawings and any other documentation that um, I had been requesting. On the 2nd of June 2013, Ozzy wrote to me, Dear Chrissy, I forwarded your email to Rafiq Fisher and Steve Wilkinson in order that they follow up with the engineer responsible for the building work on Earth 58. The engineer will need to sign off on the completed work, confirming that all building work is in accordance with the required structural and civil engineering specifications and design. A meeting was then convened on the 5th of June 2013. Um, and present was Sharif Kafar, the city legal advisor, who was um, facilitating my prior um, access to information request for drawings um, as we were preparing to go to the High Court. Um, Ozzy Gonsalves and Peter Henschel Howe were there, as was my attorney, Chris Phillips, sir, um, and Mark Jenkins, my surveyor. And the purpose of the meeting was to discuss inter alia the following. One, the additional set of plans, architectural drawings, which was shown to us at the last meeting on the 29th of April 2013 for Earth 58 back oven have been withdrawn by the owner and architect. Two, update on the plans previously shown and discuss a way forward. Three, to raise any objections and outstanding issues by the affected parties in Kubra. Four, legal services will hand over the request for information submitted by Barry Varkle. Bradbury and his architect were supposed to attend this meeting to hand over the drawings and any other documents that um, we had requested via access to information, but they failed to attend. I wrote to Ozzy Gonzalez, um, Dear all, thank you also for the meeting this morning. One thing we did not mention in the meeting this morning was my boundary wall, and I would like to know what is happening with that, as the plans approved so far show the Vibercrete wall remaining as is. On the 19th of June 2013, um, Sharif Kafir, the legal advisor who was facilitating my access to information, was also very frustrated, the fact that we couldn't get access to drawings, and he said, good morning. I was advised to attend the second meeting and the architect and Mr Bradbury was supposed to attend. To my knowledge, that meeting was intended to get the parties together and hand over the information. At this stage, I have still not received any of the building plans as Aussie cannot hand it to me when there are constantly meetings being held regarding this earth. In my view, Chrissy Phillips has proven that her rights have been infringed as a result of the construction taking place on Earth 58 Backerman. In light of the above, she is entitled to a copy of the plans. City legal advisor Sharif Kafir had actually overruled both the city and Mr Bradbury. He said that I could have copies of all the approved plans and that I could have had copies of the plans that were being submitted um, at this 2013 application approval process. Ozzy Gonsalves wrote to me on the 18th of June 2013. Dear Chrissy, thank you for taking the comprehensive minutes of our meeting, which are hereby accepted. We are also following up on all the points in Chris's letter and will assure that they are either addressed or taken into consideration by the BCO. And then a couple of weeks after that, 
Aussie Consolvis phoned my attorney Barry Barkle to say that all my um, requests had been dealt with and this was the telephone conversation. They can't get occupancy until those things are sorted out and that's where we are. So the, what, so the issues are, you said the stanchions, the gabion, yeah, the, the, the deck. Actually, the, the roof deck. Um, basically what's been said uh, is that they must remove that, that, that you know, the, 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 what's in there, the covering, the, the, the flooring on top of the garage roof. Yes. Um, they must comply with the plan. Mm. You know? And that's what, that's what we've said to him, and that's the message I sat with him and, and, and Peter and Shalhar this morning. Yeah. Went through the stuff, and that's where we are. And it was on that basis that I launched an application to set the 2012 plans aside in terms of an agreement I'd signed in good faith with Mr Bradbury. The agreement we signed in good faith relied on this agreement footprint, and this is the as-built footprint standing today unlawfully without approved drawings. Mr Bradbury and the city misled the court under oath with intention to defeat the ends of justice. There was no extraordinary delay to set the 2012 plans aside. The city, despite um, the city legal pyre facilitator Sharif Kafur giving me permission for the 2013 drawings and the 2012 drawings, the city was still obstructing them. I had no idea the city had already um, approved the 2013 drawings, of which the plan is at the top and the elevation is at the bottom. You can clearly see there are no amendment signatures of um, Mr Bradbury or any colour in the drawings, but they are completely different to the 2012 approval. And this ventilation drawing, drawn on the 4th of April, 2013 approved on the 15th of April 2013 you'll note the blue circle which is a doorway from the garage going into the basement garden I'd never seen this drawing never so my notice of motion um, requested to see the following drawings item 23 the full size revised full set of plans presented at a meeting on the 23rd of May 2012 item 24 full-size set of approved plans dated 27th of July 2012. Item 25, full-size rider plans sent for approval by Mr Long to Mr Gonzalez dated 27th of February 2013. Item 26, the full-size set of rider plans presented piecemeal coloured sketches at second respondents' offices at a meeting held with Mr Gonzalez, Ms J. Leslie, Mr C. Willemser of the Kubra, Mr Varkle, the applicant and S. Kaffer, dated 29th of April 2013. This was the meeting where um, Mr Bradbury was supposed to attend to hand over the documents and approved and submitted drawings. Item 27, full-size set of rider plans that were withdrawn from second respondent by Mr S. Long on behalf of first respondent, dated 29th of May 2013. Item 28, the full-size set of approved plans that seek to regularise the as-built garage, swimming pool and courtyard. Item 29, the full-size copies of all approved plans after 29th of May 2013 and any other approved plan for the property. Uh, despite um, Sharif Kafar, who was facilitating my PIA process, giving me permission for all these drawings I was requesting, Still, the city legals, Fiona Ogle and Antoinette Markram, and city Ozzy Gonzalez, um, seemed with impunity to be able to not uh, adhere to the Access to Information Act and still obstructed these drawings. It, it, it's quite remarkable. There was nothing I could do. This is um, the architect Steve Long's drawing for a gas storage area submission that he had approved on the 20th of September 2013, which is the day the city um, received my founding application um, to set the 2012 plans aside. I put the gas storage area drawing at the top and at the bottom is the approved November 2009 drawing. I was under the impression there would be no excavation um, either along my whole boundary wall or that of my abutting Earth 54 and that the garden would be full of soil barring that small retaining wall 
um, basement garden. Now I've put the 2012 approval at the bottom and the gas storage area drawing to the top. Now you tell me how the drawing at the bottom, the 2012 drawing, is exactly the same as the drawing at the top. I put the on-site uh, as-built reality to the left and to the right you'll see the uh, the architect's uh, gas storage area drawing um, where he's drawn it as a straight line. In fact he's drawn this as a straight line on every single drawing. And then let's go to the middle of the yard or basement garden and at the top you'll see um, the squiggly sort of like lines and then at the bottom you'll see what the as-built reality is. Then look at the top um, picture the uh, the architect's drawing and you'll see there's a red box that's a gas storage area and you'll see to the left of that red box there are some you know squiggly lines that actually if you look down to the as-built reality you'll see there's steps that go up to that red um, sto gas storage area and then um, at the bottom right of the architect's drawing at the top um, it's sort of like coloured in grey which is actually the gabion um, and you'll see the gabion is actually a rectangular straight lined um, structure but the gabion to the right of the bottom picture is actually a completely different shape altogether and you know one has to bear in mind the architect drew this in September when it was actually completed um, in July so why would he draw uh, the architect's drawing completely different to the as-built reality. That's um, something I don't understand. And then the bottom picture, which is the as-built situation of the gas storage area, you'll see that these steps leading up to the gas storage area and to the garage, they're full of concrete, um, they're not full of soil. And there is no notation on the previous 2013 drawing or the gas drawing at the top there that they, the, these are steps um, not only are they built unlawfully but they uh, contravene the height departure which was given for a, a small cutaway for illumination this is the approved gas storage area looking south to north um, at that time the architect had drawn the planters on the garage roof but they actually hadn't been approved then although they had been built in September 2012 which was a year previously. Then if you look at the next photograph which is how the garage looked like when I launched my application and at the time of launching my application these planters on the roof had no planning approval. And also see that the gabion to the right um, it's a completely different shape. There's something going on in front of that gabion, uh, which isn't on any architect's drawing. Not only is this gas installation non-compliant and the ground level's totally ridiculous, they've been raised so high, but as I've already said, this, this is in breach of the height departure. In Bradbury's affidavit 111.5, given under oath, he states, the outdoor area on the west side in regard to the area between my house and Phillips's property, i.e. the area to the west side of my house, Long confirmed that along the boundary between our properties, the garden on my side will be retained at the same level as on Phillips' side, and that terraces would be created to step down the land from the level where necessary, specifically to open up the courtyard area outside my basement. This also was to Phillips and Phillips' satisfaction. Had the courtyard area been filled in to the level approved in terms of the 2010 plans, the weight of fill on the property could have caused the Viber Creek boundary wall to collapse. After the court judgment, uh, Carol Hoffner wrote to my attorney Barry Barkel on the 5th of June 2017. In his bullet point 4 he states, Mr Kotze confirmed that the plans forwarded to you were prepared by him that he regularly inspected the property while the retaining structure was being constructed and that he is satisfied that the structure was completed in accordance with his plans. He confirmed also that the plans he furnished us with and that were forwarded to you will enable any structural engineer to establish what has been designed and whether the structure so designed complies with all relevant requirements. I received an email from the city and it was 
sent from Bradbury's engineer, Theo Kotsi, on the 20th of June 2017. It was written to head of P BDM, uh, Benita Kogel. Dear Mr Kogel, we confirm that we provided a completion certificate for the above construction for the work that we were appointed for and involved with. We did construction monitoring throughout the project and we are satisfied that the structure was completed according to our drawings and details. Uh, you'll note here that Mr Kotsi does not refer to any plan number or plan approval. He goes on to say, as in any construction, there were a number of revisions issued during construction due to client and architectural changes required. One such change was the retaining wall between Earth 58 House Bradbury and Earth 57 House Phillips, the end result being a change from a reinforced concrete retaining structure to a terraform structure. This wall was designed and installed by a specialist retaining structure company, which they designed in-house and after installation provided a completion certificate. For record purposes, I attach both completion certificates. I trust the information is what is required to address your inquiry. Please do not hesitate to contact me if more information is required. Until receiving that letter from Theo Kotsi, I had no idea that Mr Bradbury had hired a second engineer called F. Blaker. Or that a Terra Force gravity retaining wall had been built. Um, I was under the impression it was going to be a concrete walled structure. Um, and as per the 2009 drawings, I had absolutely no idea there was any excavation um, or that a retaining wall was being built uh, and excavated some five metres. Uh, and this is his completion certificate dated the 4th of February 2013, allegedly to a 2012 drawing. But you see, Theo Kotsi is very clever in his letter to Mr Kogel. He doesn't mention the drawing and he doesn't mention the date of the drawing because what he's built, that gravity terra force retaining wall, is not built to a 2012 drawing, subject of High Court Application 155702013. Uh, this is Theo Kotsi's uh, completion certificate. You'll see it just says City of Cape Town. Uh, there's no earth number, no street address, there's no nature of the project. And here is the certificate of occupancy, uh, which is for the uh, 2009 approved drawing, 01809-2009, uh, which has a date of completion of the 10th of October 2013. Um, it says description of building work dwelling extension when this was a full um, excavation and a new building. Mr Bradbury was well aware of this fraud um, as he signed uh, Form 2 which was Theo Kotsi's application for acceptance as an approved competent person in terms of Regulation A19. Uh, Theo Kotsi states here it's a new building. And this was dated on the 4th of July 2012, uh, which is for the 2012 approved drawings. But the 2012 approved drawings do not have an occupancy certificate. And the application that accompanied the 2012 drawings simply says um, additions and alterations. There is an occupancy certificate for the 00313 2013 approval which description of building work is internal alterations. And another occupancy certificate for the gas storage area, building plan number 01556-2013. Bradbury was now trying to uh, apply for retrospective planning approval for the basement garden, despite under oath stating that this garden had been built to an approved 2012 drawing. Barry Barker went down to City Interface on the 22nd of June 2017, and this is what happened. Oh, okay. His name is David Bradbury. Now, are you happy with a six? You don't want to make a pick? Um. Hey? Are you happy with yeah, this one's Clifton. Clifton. Uh, Seventeen Clifton. Uh, Seventeen Clifton. Uh, 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 Clifton
Let's mean? check it on a uh, medium. We don't have anything on the yeah. on the lens you signed. Let's just check on a medium. <laughs> What's the difference? No, um, lens you um, we deal with the that's with a, the cool. Them they deal with inter, um, internal okay. um, alterations, so and us it's yeah. when you want yeah. to build. Okay. You know. So, but now we don't have any application for him here. On land use. Yes, okay. So nothing in Campsburg. You said it was just Clifton and Benjamin. Clifton and Benjamin. And if you look under Buck Oven. Okay, there is something here. Yeah. Um, 12 Victoria Road, Kent's yeah. Bay Buck Oven. Yeah. But now it doesn't show because uh, I'm not. Um, I'm not on the BDM side, okay. so I don't know any uh, any okay. um, logging. I can't change anything here. Okay. Um, but now those that side that yeah. deals with BDM, so they there. can yeah, so they can check it for you because there are some few applications on Kenspa. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'll just go there. Yeah. Is there anywhere awesome. I can see this? Yeah. The, yeah. There there are applications. So I'm not too sure then who is the person. So it's two separate things what you do here and what they yes. do there. Okay. Yeah. All very complicated. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot. All right. Have a nice day. Bye. Okay, so Barry Barkle is now going to go across to the PBDM desk um, and he will be shown uh, this exact drawing um, that was approved in 2013 for the um, gas installation storage area. Um, on the gas storage installation approval um, drawing, it states existing Loffelstein retaining wall, um, but there's no other drawing previously, the 2009, 2012, or the other 2013 um, approved drawing, which has any reference to an existing um, Loffelstein retaining wall or a drawing that looked anything like this um, gas storage area um, submission and approval. Uh, with the final approval stamp of the 20th of September 2013, I never saw this drawing, never. Um, not on any advertising, um, and I certainly never saw this squiggle, which we now know is a TerraForce gravity retaining wall. And it looks like Juliet Leslie's um, signature on the land use management um, zoning stamp and funnily enough this was approved on the 20th of September which was the day the city received my founding application to set the 2012 plans aside. Now if that's not uh, corruption, forgery, fraud, defeating the ends of justice, perjury, then someone tell me what is. And now we'll go back to Barry Barkle's visit to City Interface, where he's just left Loom's desk, and now he's going over to see Valerie at PBDM. Hi, can I went to the land use desk and there were some plans on the system that my neighbours put in. Is it possible to see anything more here? This is BDM, is that right? <coughs> I went to that lady on the end there, yeah. and she checked out on the system, and that's it. I've shown you the others, check the these, and you can help me. But the mark, there's nothing to job description, but let it come on, we must do everything. Yeah. Did you know that? Yeah. BDM yeah. must know everything. Could, would you be able to help me? Uh, it's no. Earth, Earth 58. Crazy woman. I know, they especially know. Earth 58 Cam's Buck Oven, which is basically Cam's Bay. Thank you. Number yeah. what? That's the one there. Uh, if, yeah, 12 Victoria Road, Garden, Retaining, Structure and Pool. Yeah. Is that the one you're looking at? That's the one, yeah. So... Do you want the plans examined at the moment? Sorry? Do the plans examined at the moment? You can look, you can't take photos. You okay. can't, you can only look. You can take notes, but you can't take photos. All right, so then can we just go through it together then? Um, I don't think I'm going to be much help to you. I don't know okay, so what is it? Is. So what is it? He's, he's trying to get approvals for. Is this it here? Well, I'm not sure. I'm just going to go through the plans. It 
Okay. What is that? Um, what are these squid game lines here? Little wool. This is retaining wool. Yeah, it's going to be retaining wool. Structure to engineers. Detail. So what does that mean to engineers detail? Well, the engineer will have to verify it and say it's okay. All right. Mm. But I'm saying so. This Oki here, so he builds this. Or whatever retaining wall, but he has no plans and now he's coming like yeah. after the fact. Now I'm saying I yeah. know that because I'm next it's door. It's difficult, you can't see much. And who's the architect here? Um, That's right. It's just building a retaining wall. Uh, some, some, okay, free space. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Steve Long. Steve Long. Okay. And when did he put these plans in? Okay. This year, 11 May this year. Mm -hmm. And what sort of process does it have to go through now? Well, the plans examiner needs to check it. And if he's got any amendments, he'll send out a letter. And what about the neighbours? What rights do they have? That's got to do with zoning, not with us. But do they get notified of, of these plans? No. Not if it's not necessary. Um, and then who decides on that? Everybody supports it. Yeah. Land use support it. Yeah. Environment support it. We must be doing something else because the water department. Just to interject quickly here, uh, Mr. Bradbury's second engineer, uh, Mr. F. Laker, had built a water feature into the TerraForce gravity retaining wall. Um, this needed a swimming pool certificate as it was deeper than 300 mil. Um, and you can see that the pool needing swimming pool compliance is um, at the bottom south side. You must be doing something else because the water department or MS probably with the bay and that type of thing. So what are we still waiting for them? No, no, they've all supported just the plans examiner to see if he's happy with uh, that everything's on the plans and then so, he'll send it up for approval. So he's the last guy? Mm, there's another two people after him. And who's that? Well, it's the plans examiner and it's the building control officer in section there that signed it off. Okay. So I can't get a copy of this? No. You can go to the architect, maybe he'll give you something. It's copyright, so you can't. Sorry to interject again, but this courtyard is allegedly built to the 2012 approved drawings. Um, this was subject to my high court matter. Why is this drawing copyright when the Access to Information Act already overruled the city and Mr. Bradbury and said I could have the approved 2012 basement drawings? Notwithstanding Mr. Long, the architect, is now putting in drawings as proposals when they were actually built and completed in February 2013 with an uh, engineer completion certificate. This is doesn't add up to me and is very wrong. Anyway, back to Mr. Vargel's meeting with PBDM. Yeah. But it's all got to do with the wall by the looks of it. Don't you have to actually put in a plan before you build something? Normally, yes. So how's this Aki coming afterwards and doing this? Don't know. Okay. A lot of people do unauthorized work. So, so I can build a skyscraper and then I'll have to say, hey, you know. <laughs> I don't know what happens there. That's a problem. I know a lot of people do unauthorized work. Okay. I just want to see something interesting. Make sure it is only the wall that he's talking about. Okay. Yeah, these are just, just, the wall. just about the wall now. Okay. It's 2.8, but it's a um, retaining so wall, that's why it's so high. So, what happens if this. It's a garden retaining stuff. So what happens if this thing like falls down and he, because he hasn't done it properly, you know, then what happens? I can't answer that question for you. <laughs> okay. All right.
I don't know. Your name is? I don't know. Valerie. So I put my phone in my pocket before she started, or before she stopped talking. And the last thing she said is, I can speak to the building inspector from 8 o'clock till 10 o'clock every morning if I'm worried about the safety of the structure. So yeah, I'm sure we can go back to Steve uh, Walkinson. It's mission over. Goodbye. Valerie seemed to be quite nonchalant that uh, people build all the time without approved plans. Um, and she seemed to find it quite funny. Um, that um, what happens if something collapses, she was asked. She laughed. On the 18th of July 2017, the city conceded that Mr Bradbury had built unlawfully a 4.5 metre additional section of the reinforced concrete wall abutting Earth 57. Despite this reinforced concrete wall allegedly abutting my property, being subject to my High Court application, and being submitted retrospectively. Table Bay manager advised by Hayes attorneys, Ryan Menchies, um, is refusing me access to the city files and refusing me access to this drawing, despite my property um, being in the various stages of collapse. And despite my successful access to information, which allowed me not only access to this drawing, but copies to this drawing, notwithstanding under oath, the city and Mr. Bradbury have lied. They've committed the crime of perjury by saying that all works have been built to an approved 2012 drawing, which is simply not the case. In this letter, the building inspector Evan Solomons refers to a plan number of 1809-2010. There is no such plan number. As you can see from the occupancy certificate, the correct plan number is in fact 1809-2009. 2012, the applicant was notified by Mr. Hoffmeyer that approval had been granted, building plan approval had been granted, and that the first respondent was going to commence works in relation to that approval and the applicant was specifically invited if it wished to enforce its rights to the agreement to institute proceedings. 